let's talk about six healthy tips to go from surviving to thriving in your healthy relationship after abuse. And these six tips have made such a huge impact in my own relationship that I know it will help you too. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jenna. And if you're new here, I guide high achieving women find lasting love after abuse by soothing their mother wound. And if that's something that sounds interesting to you, make sure to hit subscribe, ring that bell, grab a drink and get cozy. Now our first step is the most crucial and obviously my favorite, especially within my line of work. It's understanding your past traumas. All of us have experienced something either within our childhood or something more recent. And these situations really impact our perceptions, behaviors, and how we interact with others. But just being open to looking deeper into those situations opens the door to healing. So here are some things that you want to look for. Observing your triggers and what need is associated with that. Now this can look like you feeling embarrassed, anxious, happy, angry, even sad. These emotions are your roadmap to healing. See, emotions are so powerful. We literally have come to this earth to be able to experience emotions. And when we can experience them in all ranges, from happy, sad, to angry, and so on, we are able to begin healing on deeper levels. But for this exercise, you're just observing the scenarios that are activating these emotions. Start noticing which emotions you have more frequently and start looking at what unmet need might be associated with that, not feeling seen, heard, loved, or safe. And then finding ways to fulfill those needs for yourself. And if you've never done this before, go ahead and grab my Uncover Your Unmet Needs video course in the description below. Another thing to look for is analyze the relationship that you had with your parents. Most importantly, your mother. The mother is the blueprint of all other relationships. Now you may be thinking, but Jenna, I have a great relationship with my mother and I had a really good childhood. And one, I'm so glad that you feel that way. And two, we can start looking a little bit deeper into actually what has happened within the relationship. This is not mother blaming, but mother healing. We are wanting to look at just the dynamics and how you truly felt when you were around your mother. We can all agree that our parents did the best that they could with the tools that they had. That doesn't mean that your emotional needs were met. And this is what we want to be looking for because what we experienced in our past, especially with our relationship with our mother is going to be very closely linked to what we accept in romantic relationships. For example, if you have more of an anxious attachment style and you're always needing reassurance within your romantic relationships, do you still love me? Are you going to leave me? This is going to be a sign that you were unsure how your mother felt or she didn't feel like she was connecting with you and providing your needs or emotional needs to be met. You may have told her that you weren't feeling well and she said, no worries, go to school. You'll feel great when you get there and see all of your friends. This invalidated your needs and what you were feeling. And so you started to disconnect and think, my mom knows best, so I can't listen to my own body. This is why you search for people to give you that reassurance because you are unable to provide it for yourself, but this can be changed. And another thing that you want to start looking for is analyzing your past romantic relationships. Now that you have a clear blueprint of how your relationship was with your mother, you can cross reference that with past romantic relationships. What were similar? What was different? Remember, you can get as detailed as you want. The deeper that you go, the better answers you are going to get. When you answer with surface level answers, you are going to get surface level results. Moving to number two of our six healthy tips is recognizing signs of a healthy relationship. 
many of us have not experienced healthy relationships within our childhood, which then moved into our teen years and adult or young adult years. What we experienced in our past is typically re revisited into our adult life. And so when you leave a toxic relationship or somebody who was narcissistic and also are seeing maybe your mom was a narcissist or had more narcissistic tendencies, that it's going to be very foreign when you get into a healthy relationship. And it's not the same as what you are typically used to. You may be used to more chaos and drama where now it may feel boring or maybe you feel like they don't love you as much if they aren't yelling. Another thing that I see too often is that they feel like it is too good to be true, waiting for that shoe to drop. Like, is this real? So here are three signs of a healthy relationship. And number one is effective communication. This is when you feel comfortable expressing your feelings, your needs, and your desires. And let me preface that you don't feel like a burden. So when you ask for your needs to be met or share how you are feeling and what desires you have for the future, you are not feeling like you have to hold back because you don't want to hurt the other person or nervous about how they are going to respond. And your partner actively listens instead of getting angry or upset and feeling defensive, which also ties into them being able to receive feedback in a healthy manner. Where in a toxic relationship, you might have kept all of your thoughts, feelings, and desires to yourself in fear of being judged, rejected, or abandoned. If you notice that you're still holding onto your tongue, even with your healthy partner, and they are okay with your expression, then this is when you want to go back to step one and create safety within your nervous system. Next is trust and transparency. You actually do not have any feeling of looking through their phone. <laughs> it's such a relief. You don't wonder where they are and you feel secure enough when they go out and do things without you. And lastly, shared values and goals. A healthy relationship is where both partners still maintain individuality but there is alignment within their core beliefs and where they're going towards the future. This is a strong foundation for success. Is number three, embracing vulnerability. Vulnerability is the willingness to open up, be authentic, and share their true self, which includes embracing and showcasing one's true weaknesses and strengths. Your true self attracts your true believer. If you're watching this video, you've probably known all too well people pleasing. And when you hide your true self, you only attract people that don't align with who and where you want to actually go. This creates a lot of issues and later on a lot of blow ups. Now, this might be a little bit more difficult for you because you don't even know who you actually are. So starting to go back to things that you actually enjoyed when you were in childhood. Like I loved reading and I stopped reading for a good portion. I was actually reading more self-help books. My true passion was reading fantasy and reading romance novels. And so when I started adding that back into my everyday life, I started experiencing life in a whole different way is when partners choose to be more vulnerable, deeper connections of intimacy unfold. So ask yourself, how safe do you really feel receiving intimacy from your partner? Number four, setting healthy boundaries. You should have known that boundaries is definitely going to make it on this list. And the reason why Boundaries is on here is because we're going to piggyback on everything that we've already learned. And you can identify your needs, have effective communication, and feel safe. You are able to create boundaries. Now, boundaries are not for the other person. Boundaries are for you. And you might be thinking, well, that doesn't make sense, Jenna. I tell them that I don't want to be intimate on the first date, and when they respect me, that is respecting my boundary. But if you decide to go past that boundary and be intimate on the first date, you may feel guilt and shame and even resentment towards that person for not holding that boundary. See, 
that boundary was for you to know that I am not going to do that on the first date. Also, it's not their job. Consistency and maintaining a healthy boundary is crucial. And let's be honest, when you used to set boundaries before with friends, even family, many times it probably was bulldozed over. And that's why you will have to enforce your boundaries consistently. And unfortunately, I guess I only have five healthy tips, not six, but this last one is building a support system. This is having a strong friend group. This is actually a huge key indicator on how people have healthy relationships. Strong friendships help create a healthy romantic relationship dynamic because the way that you do one thing is the way that you do all things. So if you experience a really healthy group of friends, then you are going to copy paste that into romantic relationships. You're also going to, again, have your own identity and experience more fun with your girlfriends. They will be able to give you guidance in any situation that you might be stuck in or feeling kind of wonky about or just give you guidance in anything that you have going on from work, from other friends, from family and your romantic relationship. But a big key thing here is that they are going to also model to you what a healthy relationship is like, because many times they will also be in healthy relationships and your net work is your net worth. So if you have girlfriends that are going to be praising their partner and cherishing them, you are also going to do the same. And it's going to show up in so many other areas of your life, not just your romantic relationship. That is it. Let me know what you thought of these five tips or if you have any tips that help you through your rela relationships, share them in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here and always remember to geek responsibly.